Let's give a welcome round of applause to Swami Nathan Guru Murthy. Honorable Minister Sri Arjun Mengwal, Justice Deepak Mishra, my friend Sally Nariman, Mr. Sham Diwan, who's, with whose father I had very intense relationship and he was one of the persons who moulded me. And Arnab Goswami, my good friend, and Mahesh, who thought of inviting me because he felt that there should be a voice outside the jurisprudential group, which is both the judges and the lawyers put together. You know, it is my fortune, my pride, an opportunity for me to share my thoughts, not as a lawyer, but as someone who had come in contact with law, fell in love with law, became passionate about law, because of a series of accidents, coherent accidents, which took place in my life, starting from emergency and the days before. You know, we were all underground at that time. We couldn't go to our houses. And I had just then qualified as a chartered accountant and got married also. So, it was at that time I came to know the essence of the Constitution, the fundamental right, the need for it. Otherwise, it was just a piece of paper. Nobody knew what fundamental right meant before probably the emergency was imposed. Very few people knew about its impact, maybe most in the field of commerce or property. There was no idea of what it means to the normal, ordinary human being. I was given the responsibility of maintaining 150 families to provide rations for them who were in jail. They had done nothing wrong. So I knew what it means to have fundamental rights, to be outside, how to approach the judiciary. This is what made me to study the constitution in depth. In fact, emergency became the first major impact on me to study the constitution. And before I go into what transformed me from being a chartered accountant into someone who had developed such passion for law, I will talk about Ram Jaitmalani. You know, Ram and Fali and people like them are the ones who groomed me, encouraged me. And they found that, you know, I was not a lawyer, but they never discriminated my ideas on law. I could put provocative questions to them, contrary questions to them, even questioning their very idea about what they were proposing to argue in courts. They would tolerate it, they would encourage it. In fact, I was just uh, sharing with Falina Ariman how in the Indian Express demolition case we worked. He said how much work we put he also said how little work is being put today by the bar. It's a comparison. How the government of India functions from the allocation of business rules to the idea, authentication of document rules. Because the government of India said the secretary signing on behalf of the government of India doesn't have the authority to give sanction for the building plan. The government disowned the whole thing. So we had to construct the whole Article 73 downwards to how a secretary signs, meaning the President of India signing. It was a 72-page affidavit which he had to file in the Supreme Court because the government disowned its own signature. You know, this is how law develops. Law develops by hard work, by, by the passion to fight for rights. So, when I started with Ram, you know, he was one of the most comfortable human beings. First of all, leave law aside. Such a comfortable human being. I said, Ram, you are wrong. He will listen to it. We will all be shouting and talking. He will be reading as if nothing is happening outside. 
and he released the judgments which were quoted against him and we would have 20 judgments in favor of what we have to speak ram will find fault in the judgment that have been quoted and he will say that to find holes in the do- in the judgments of the opponents is what will win the case for you not that you quote alternative judgments to present your view points these are all brilliant legal strategies to which i was initiated when i was just 27 28 an opportunity which i got purely out of accident of being the advisor to ramnath goenka who had to face the toughest time in terms of government attack on him during the emergency and afterwards even after the emergency the building demolition case the the customs duty case and all the cases that were launched 300 cases were launched in a period of 30 days all these things we had to fight and perforce we had to become lawyers in indian express almost 6 7 people who had nothing to do with law turned to be good lawyers thanks to the kind of assault that the government made and we had to defend that institution and the civil rights which the institution represented that's how i came in contact with fali that's how i came in contact with nariman anil divan to stay it all started with nani palki wala then sir why i will tell you some of these things this anecdotal effect of the association i had with all these people unbelievable no university no law textbook no library can give the kind of knowledge which i could get by my association with these people so about ram is he ram somebody asked how many times he was rajya sabha member i think our minister asked he was a rajya sabha member four times of course he was in lok sabha he was in rajya sabha member four times he was shiv sena rajya sabha member he was janata dal rajya sabha member he was bjp rajya sabha member and he was rjd rajya sabha member he completely unified india <laughs> the man had immense he had a huge heart in fact he told me guru will you help me to defend lalu yadav <laughs> i said ram <laughs> you see ram and me had a very uh, open exchange on many issues you see i was also called a uh, fighter against a crusader against corruption i would always screen a client 20 times i will take certificate from my friends that i can take him as a client because tomorrow somebody should not say that i have taken a wrong client or benefited by a, a, a wrong uh, association but ram will take the the most acknowledged rascal and defend his case and still he was called a crusader against corruption i said ram how lucky you are we are giving up 90% of our opportunities to get the name that we are fighting against corruption but you are able to fight against corruption call the crusader against corruption and at same time represent these people and make money out of them in fact a very interesting dialogue took place between ramnath goenka and ram jethmani in fact fali nariman will be very happy to listen to that ramnath ji is one of the greatest pride is that none of the senior counsel should charge him guru nani does in charge me fali does in charge me ram does in charge me soli does in charge me ramna ji used to feel so proud that the, these great guys are not charging him in fact he showed me the bill which fali nariman had sent after completing the arguments on the demolition case and almost 35 40 days the case went on it i think it was after the keshavananda case it was the longest case argued before the supreme court till then so when he that bill showed that fali had charged him only for the clerkage he must have shown that file uh, bill to fali he must have shown this to 100 people not to praise you but to see make others feel how important goenka was so you must understand arun shori used to say goenka is article 19 one a <laughs> he represented the freedom of india it is no it is not the press freedom of today you know those who had worked in the indian express those days the kind of troubles they had undergone salary deferment salary cut these are all the things which journalists underwent to defend press freedom so article 19 1a was represented by ramnath going at that time and so ram he ramnath going asked uh, ram 
Ram, you are uh, defending so many people pro bono. How are you making your money? And Ram said, that's a very simple formula, Ram Naji. I make money depending upon the trouble my client is in and the weight of his purse. This is how he, he said, I make money so that I can do pro bono work. You know, these are all things. How, with how many tall people we move? Where are those tall people today? In fact, this is how I am going to end my speech. That what we need today is not tall legal brains, not tall judges, not tall media men, but tall people. Tall men, sun crown. This is what we need. Now, going into uh, what is my uh, personal qualification to be here? You know, I am a chartered accountant, but chartered accountants think I am not a chartered accountant. I am a journalist. Journalists think I am not a journalist. I am a chartered accountant. But I am happy ultimately somewhere I have been asked to share my thoughts on a subject on which I have developed some empirical skills. And I am happy this audience of uh, people of jurisprudence are listening to me, which even my own profession and the adopted profession as a journalist has not afforded me the chance. So the, my first qualification is that I am a friend of Ram. That is why I first felt that I should be present here. And my next qualification is that I have to labor to prove to you that my introduction into the field of law is because of my passion for understanding the constitution, constitutional rights, people, and the role of the government and the role of the judiciary. This is what made me not only feel comfortable with law, compassionate with law, and develop passion for law. So, if you look at the schooling I had done, with uh, Nani to uh, Sirwai to, uh, to Fali to Ram, you know, this kind of familiarity with people of the highest attainment in the, in the field of law and jurisprudence, not many people would have got, but for the fact that I was associated with the Indian Express and through Indian Express, I was fighting for this uh, great cause, which proved to be the best years of my life. Achut Padvardhan once told me, I don't know how many of you heard the name, he was the man who led the 1942 Quit India movement. He told me once, whatever you achieve in life, Guru, the years that you spent with the Indian Express will be the best year in your life. That is how it proved to be, because that expanded not only my vision, my knowledge, my understanding, and I was an ekalavya of all these people, and that is how I am standing before you. Now, I'll tell you how I was encouraged. You know, in a very important criminal case from Calcutta, I wrote a 90-page complaint charging with fraud, uh, forgery, and all that. Ram told me, Guru, in my life, I have never come across a 90-page complaint. I said, Ram, I am applying the principles of conspiracy under the Calcutta uh, rules for civil suit for this criminal case. Because either we win the criminal case at the opening or lose it forever. He said, okay, I go by your assessment. And that case was approved by the High Court. The magistrate issued, you know it what the case is. I don't want to mention the name of the case. So the process was issued and the High Court, the high court there was a bitter battle between Ram Jetmalani and, uh, and Shanti Bhushan. Shanti Bhushan said the weight the, that the complaint is 90 pages knows, it means that there is nothing in the complaint. That is why the weight of the complaint is now going to de de decide the fate of, uh, fate of the case or the quality of the content in it. So finally, we won before the High Court. Ram was in uh, London. I rang up Ram and told him, you know how nice he was? Guru, my judgment was wrong. This 90-page complaint won the case for us. Can you find any other great mind encouraging a small man like me and enhancing my level of confidence? This is how I became familiar with law and comfortable with law. And... Uh, now coming to the issue that has been debated so far, the idea of uh, basic features or basic uh, uh, structure of the constitution. 
I will again take you to an anecdotal reference with uh, Mr. Uh, Sirwai, H. M. Sirwai. You know, in the in 1980s, in the Indian Express, uh, Indian Express had carried on a campaign against Antule, and Antule and uh, Datta Saman joined together, and they shut down the Express. And uh, if Antule and he was the chief minister, and Datta Saman was a Uh, a person of uh, physical means of handling the pe- people were not willing to come to the office the journalists were afraid even the uh, guards were afraid of coming to the office so in that situation we decided to file a red petition and then the uh, we decided to close down the paper and the government refused to give permission under section 28 o of the industrial disputes act so we filed the red petition where we said that there are reasonable restrictions for the right to freedom of expression but for the right to silence there is no restriction right to silence is absolute under the constitution this is what uh, sirwai was to argue so when when i went to uh, brief him is there any i know everything you have said this in page 21 this in 29 this in 48 this in 62 the briefing was over in 2 minutes so i told him sir i want to sit with you for some time and you have closed the whole thing in 5 minutes what do you want to ask you can ask sir can you tell me something about golaknath case and uh, keshavananda case i had golaknath not taught i said yes sir i am a student of law i have read your constitution books and i am fairly familiar with how the constitutional amendments moved in uh, 1971 onwards can i ask you a question sir previously the unamendability of the constitution was limited to part 3 of the constitution and that is what you fought against that you cannot say fundamental rights cannot be amended that was the case of the government but you have ended up with a judgment which has extended the unamendability to the whole of the constitution he said yes this is an extreme reaction golaknath was a reaction this is an extreme reaction to golaknath this is what we have to understand when we are talking about keshavananda case the political system and the judicial system when they lose mutual trust what happens the political masters the political sovereign always wants to control everything the simple point i will mention to you when uh, surya prakash is here he only brought it out uh, when the first amendment was proposed to article 191a the idea was jawarlal nehru wanted the restrictions without the word reasonable but all the people sat together and said no it's not correct even though you are jawarlal we advise you that the restriction should be reasonable so there was an internal mechanism in the political sovereign's mind which made the word reasonable restriction possible in the legislation this was lost when mrs gandhi came you know what happened bank nationalization and then uh, privy purse case and then the conflict between the judiciary and the executive started and keshavananda was one of the uh, 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 this uh, um, golaknath case was one of the principal drive of this and it is true that it was a too tightly worded judgment for anyone to be comfortable with it though it was a very well written judgment not that all judgments well written are good judgments and so that reacted that went into the reaction now we do not know which part of the constitution amendment and that honorable chief justice uh, mr dipak mishra listed the things which the constitutional makers did not see as the unamendable part of the constitution for example it is now mentioned about uh, the federal structure can india not think of tomorrow a presidential form of government let's assume the constitution votes for the presidential form of government can the supreme court strike it down saying that it violates the rule of uh, uh, ba- the basic structure of uh, federal structure you know i think there is lack of balance and my view is a dissenting view any dissenting view is an appeal to the future and brooding conscience of judiciary this may appeal so let us not think that the basic structure theory is so well founded from a concrete position of unamendability of 
part three of the constitution we have gone to an abstract position of unamendability of any part of the constitution and if the supreme court decides that this is the basic structure who is to question it for example the enjack case it could well have been read down that you cannot override the uh, uh, two members of the uh, judicial uh, system and we read it down it's not possible the matter would have been solved but the question of reading it down would not have given the judiciary the position that it wants namely that it wants the independence from the government that is also not correct in fact i had a discussion with the reserve bank governor yv reddy he told me that we should be independent but there is also some interdependence that is how the system works and i think that we are in a we are, we, are, we are now uh, 50 years after this judgment was pronounced and there has been as the honorable chief justice said that there has been enough empirical evidence to understand this and i think my appeal is that the framers of the original constitution had kept one thing in mind that the fundamental rights of the people should not be affected whatever is the system of governance now the basic structure theory brings about a situation where the judiciary will decide the system of governance also this is not the intention of the original framers of the constitution it may work for some time but a very powerful sovereign coming and powerful sovereign can be produced by democracy it's not that powerful sovereign will be produced by any method other than democracy in india such a person may take a position again a confrontation can come between the judiciary and the legislature i think it it would be within my rights as a citizen to appeal to the judicial fraternity and also the entire uh, intellectual basis of uh, judicial functioning law courts that we should have a real look at the basic structure theory and with that i finally want to say only one thing i have been seeing what's happening in the last 40 years the state of the court the state of the bar the state of the media the state of the discourse now ram is not there we see a dwarfing all tall people when they disappear we don't see an equal in person on the horizon we need tall people sun crowned and they cannot come if they are going to discuss only about their fee structure for cases and the turnover that they achieve in a month or in a year we have to move away from all at least some people have to move away from away from all this all people cannot be produced by mere money making in fact tall people are those who keep away from this so we need to pray for as the american senator did when uh, the uh, watergate case was going on he said we need tall people sun crowned who live above the fog of uh, i forget the uh, full poem it's a beautiful poem and with a drop in his uh, eyes he closed saying that no system will work unless there are tall people we have to produce tall people thank you very much thank you thank you very much uh, mr gurmurthy as always pleasure hearing you our final keynote speaker this evening is a senior advocate and one of the foremost constitutional lawyers who's been part of milestone cases like decriminalizing homosexuality and the right to privacy as a fundamental right he regularly argues on constitutional matters and has literally written the book on environmental law in india let's put our hands together for shyam devan